chat. We have some super chats lined up here. At least wonder what do we, what do we got? Jim has been dying for this one. <laughs> Had to finish my point about Trump and the military there. Got to separate him from that support. Got to get the warriors actually acting like warriors instead of soldiers. But uh, Benjamin Henry, thank you for chipping in. $5, getting yourself to the top of the line here, writes, if you don't get the nomination this time around, will you run again in 24 or 28? Absolutely. And I had a great conversation uh, with a delegate from Indiana last night. I'll let her remain anonymous aside from those two identifying gender and state and delegate status. Three, three identifying factors there. Um, uh, but, you know, one of the things she, she was considering, uh, you know, supporting myself and, or, or uh, Jacob Hornberger. And, and if, if you like the you know, passionate communication of the principles that matter to you, you couldn't go wrong with Jacob or myself. I think we are uniquely strong as candidates in that category. But one of the differentiating factors is, well, one one is the identity politics, and this is not not because I care. Again, I, should you vote for me because I'm a Marine? Hell no, you vote for me because I'm right, because this policy is the ethical one. But if you want to nominate me as the representative of the Libertarian Party, then being a Marine is, is, is very helpful. Well, in the same sense, being half, half Jewish is helpful, and unfortunately, those demographics do not work in Mr. Hornberger's favor as just another 70 year old white dude like and that would be it, like if america looks at it's trump biden hornberger three 70 year old white dudes he got uh, uh but here's the other thing and, and and what i think she was most convinced by was that supporting me represents a long-term investment in the movement i'm 38 years old i've built my life around this cause i'm not going anywhere and i've made the absolute commitment in this campaign that I will keep running on this platform as long as the support continues to build until the federal government ceases to exist one way or another. Whether I get the nomination or not, this is until we, and this is whether we win or not, no matter how many votes we get, the line in the sand for me is as long as support is politically building for a peaceful solution, the federal government is still there as a problem. I will be the voice of that solution. So 24, 28, yes, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that that we've been doing this whole time in building organization around this campaign and building the coalition groups, building all the mechanisms to make this a long-term campaign. Uh, getting Adam versus the man as, as, as you know the centerpiece of my messaging up to speed now. I'm so grateful to have CJ on board. They have so many of you supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Adam versus the man. I know CJ's got the link for you there somewhere. And to Benjamin Henry, thank you very much for that super chat. Outstanding. From MSN.com, from the Los Angeles Times by Paige St. John and Annette Choi, the search for early coronavirus deaths plagued by bureaucratic delays and roadblocks. It was early February when signs of something alarming turned up in the heart of Silicon Valley. St. Clara County emergency rooms had a surge of patients with flu-like symptoms. Yet 30% of them tested negative for influenza, triple the usual rate. Something else was making people sick. That's something some researchers now suspect was COVID-19, which lurked in the San Francisco Bay Area for weeks before anyone suspected it had arrived in the United States. Efforts traced the virus back in time, however, had been frustrated by roadblocks, delays, and setting policies for testing the dead. A single national lab able to do that work in a fractionalized corner system that creates large blind spots in the hunt for origins of the pandemic. The reason I'm bringing you this story is that it reveals the Chinese finger trap nature of government. When you see it as the only solution, all you can do is stick your finger further down the hole. To someone with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And the idea that we could push this thing from the other side and get our finger out of this trap entirely tends to escape most people, especially in a time of crisis like this, 
when we are scared into supporting authority, scared into supporting current leadership. So just to tease out a couple specific things about this angle in the narrative about early coronavirus deaths already the story is is asking for a single national lab no centralization creates vulnerability and what they're doing here is saying that we have a they, they're decrying decentralization saying that we have a fractionalized corner system that creates large blind spots in the hunt for origins of the pandemic well that corner system so again not pointing out the problems true source here being government misses the point misses the opportunity for a real solution because you're asking the wrong questions do we have a single national lab to do that work yeah we do we have the centers for disease control we have the fda we have lots of national labs now you want a single one you want a bigger more consolidated one you think that's going to lead to a better outcome no this is the product of centralized bureaucracy is that you have multiple labs with different responsibilities overlapping you have confusion and then as the cherry on top of this information sharing system, you have Donald Trump ordering the CDC to conduct their deliberations in secret. So the fractionalized corner system, that is a problem with government being responsible for this as opposed to people who are actually accountable. And what we have done with the system we have today is taken away from the private sector, the healthcare industry, the most important parts of to things in, 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 the, in the system related to dealing with pandemics and that allows government to mess with us so bad to take advantage of us and to turn to them for more help and so this plays into the whole narrative of things are going bad we need more government but again just a little bit uh, of shifting perspective helps you go mm, no no i'm sorry more government is not the answer please see a different way we go now to florida where the statistics are also being horrifically manipulated from tampabay.com. Florida health department officials told Mander to delete coronavirus data before reassigning her, according to emails. Cool graphic here on Florida's COVID-19 data and surveillance dashboard. Total cases, 46,442. And again, I, I, I'm i sorry to use a, a humorous tone even to laugh at this, but total cases cumulative data for florida residents you know what is what does that mean uh, that includes people who might have walked into a doctor's office with a cough and the doctor sent them home and said well you probably got you probably got the rona i'm gonna add you to my list positive re so total cases positive residents i don't know why there's a different number for that hospitalizations uh 8,304 deaths 2000 um you know, new cases, but all these statistics are, you, you know, anyway, to the story. One day before top Florida Department of Health data manager was taken off her role maintaining the state's COVID-19 dashboard, officials had directed her to remove data from public view that showed Floridians reported symptoms of the disease before cases were officially announced, according to internal emails obtained by the Tampa Bay Times. According to the emails, Department staff gave the order shortly after reporters requested the same data from the agency on May 5th. The data manager, Rebecca Jones, complied with the order, but not before she told her supervisors it was the wrong call. By the next morning, control over the data was given to other employees, according to an email Jones posted Friday on a public listserv. Jones, the department's geographic information systems manager, wrote that she was no longer the point person for questions about the department's Florida COVID-19 data and surveillance dashboard. She implied her removal was an act of retribution. The dashboard, which gives daily updates on the numbers of deaths, cases, and tests for the coronavirus in every county in the state, is relied upon by officials, journalists, academics, and residents who want as much information as possible about the deadly pandemic. I, you know, even even that, you know, the insertion of de the they they can't just say the pandemic; it's the deadly pandemic. You know, by by itself, not a problem not problematic at all the pandemic is certainly deadly no question but when you put deadly in front of pandemic and you don't put deadly in front of government i think there's a little bias being exposed here i don't do this rhetorically but i could just as well every time i mention government or we, I, we could put a filter on your browser so that every time the word government comes up in any article that you read it says 
the deadly government, the deadly Donald Trump, you know, like there's so deadly sugar, the deadly car accidents, deadly driving, deadly planes, dead, like, no, it's a deadly pandemic. Be afraid of, you know, okay. Besides the visible dashboard, the department releases the same data with only slightly more information and daily reports, as well as in another format that allows for easier data analysis. So, um, you know, you could go either way with this, right? They, apparently, they were showing people, they, they wanted to ask about the event date field of data, which showed when people reported, first reported coronavirus symptoms or positive test results. Some people had listed dates as early as January 1, indicating people reported symptomatic or tested positive much earlier than when cases were confirmed in March. It's unclear when the state learned about those cases or when the people were tested. So there are people going both ways with this, right? You could say that the government officials in Florida are trying to hide the fact that they should have known in January that the virus was going. And it's it's kind of like journalists, we should be calling bullshit on them going, okay, so if you declared all this now and you're saying the virus is a threat now, why weren't you saying something in January when there was data creeping up about this? Oh, because the fear hadn't blown up yet. You hadn't figured out the political strategy yet. And so there's there's an effort for some bureaucrats to cover their asses and say, oh, let's delete that data. We didn't know. Let's just keep it. There's so many conflated interests here, right? And you might say, well, this 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 data manager here is just trying to do the right thing and, and keep, you know, get, get all the data out and gets fired for for not removing it. I mean, there's so much back and forth in the details of this. I, I really don't care to parse this out. But there are some some lessons and some takeaways here. And and even my frustration in trying to understand this story, I'm looking at this like, well, who's covering up what? Are these people who are trying to get a realistic view of, of what's going on with corona? Or people who are trying to blow up the fear? Or people trying to, you know, bury stuff that incriminates them? Or or you know, for what, what what's the motivation here? And it's like trying to pick a part among, you know, fighting mafia dons. Which is the most honorable? And you're like, screw them all, screw them all, screw screw this whole system. Why why are we turning to government to manage this data? Like, why are we trusting them with this? And this just goes to show that when you turn to government for data, they're they're going to use it to manipulate you. They're going to take advantage of you. So, regardless of what the story here is in Florida, you can't trust government to manage data. And this is why, and I hate to go back to Jim Gregg, he's on my mind as the big statist in the race here, my, my friend Jim, you know, who says, well, what should what should government do in, in the coronavirus crisis? Well, they should manage the information and make sure that everybody has good information. <laughs> That's an extended face bomb for you, my friend, Mr. Mr. Judge Jim Gray.